You want to know how to fit some wren forks? You better keep watching. This. Oh, oh. So you get your nice new wren forks out of the box. These have been fitted already, so bear with me, but I'll just go through um, what we've got. So you've got a nice set of forks. You also get some guards, which go on the lowers stop any stoned uh, bashing onto them. There's some zip ties to hold on some little cable clips. Uh, these are some uh, spacers for travel adjust and axle to crown adjust. I'll, sh I'll go through that in another video. You won't need to know about that at the moment for doing this. These clips are to hold the guards on. Uh, I think that's about it. Oh, and your axle, obviously. So what you do is um, to fit the guard is get yourself your clamp and have it so the bolt is to the outside of the fork. Now you gently, don't want to snap these, this is a carbon, so just gently spread it enough just to snap it on, pop the bolt in, just so you locate the bolt, don't need to tighten it up too much, and get your guard, slide that in there, and just nip it up, so you want this bit of moulding to line up with the front of the fork once you get that and make sure it's sat at the bottom once you've got that in place you see you only need to tighten this to five newtons so don't go mad then right i've got the other one already so this side one with a cutout as i mentioned so they're on next thing is pop your axle in pop your brake on so you want that brake to be able to move just to adjust the alignment of the rotor with the or the caliper with the rotor there we go right next thing is i'm going to pop the guides on so in the kit you get these little guides so what you've got is this part and then there's a like a central part so you snap that inside this piece and this clamps around the cable let's pop that on as well your zip tie so the good idea is to snap this onto your cable first Got two of these on, roughly around there somewhere. So then you put your, there's a little slot in the back of here for your zip tie. It's just to keep the cable tidy from flapping around. That's it. Then you just put those in the position you want them, pull them tight and just nip the ends off. Pop a bit of grease on here. It's just good practice to always keep a bit of grease on your, any bolt through axle it's worth just putting some grease on it just to stop it from sticking. Happens all the time with all kinds of bikes we see in the workshop. Just something you just forget about. Especially in the winter in the UK, things get dry and mucky. And, and if you, like I say, if you don't remove your wheels very often, some people don't take them out at all unless they get a puncture, um, it can really get seized. So pop that in. And then you want to adjust your brake. Put the brake on, whether it's the front or the rear, just pull the lever and put it on. Holds the caliper in position over the rotor and then just nip that up. Don't go wrenching it up too much. You want it up to it so it's just tight. And it should have centralised itself, so give it a spin. It was just kissing very, very, very slightly. Put the brake on and off a few times. And we got it. That's it pistons have centralized themselves so that's it so we'll get the bike on the ground and then we'll go through setting up the air pressure okay forks are fitted um, time to set them up so so now we want to be putting the uh, air in the top chamber so I'll put some air in here and you'll see the forks will extend as I pump some air in so. 10 15 psi, they'll start to come up. There you go, and extend out. So, I'm going to put uh, 50 psi in here, it's quite a good starting pressure just to get an idea. I'm about 13 stone, 85 ish kilos, I suppose, something like that, and it's about my weight. I've done this a few times now, so that's 50. So, what we're going to do now, the way to set the sag is I say. Put that ring up to the top make sure that the lockout is open and then 
don't bounce on the front of the bike no weight on the handlebar well, don't push onto the fork you want to just sit on the seat get yourself next to something that you can lean against so just put your feet on the pedals just gradually stand up spread your weight between the handlebars and the pedals in the attack position put the brakes on is quite a good idea and then just gently sit back down again and then we'll measure the sag on the fork so what you want to do now is just get a tape the forks 110 mil travel you want about um, 30 mil of that in sag to start with we have got exactly 30 mil so that's about the right sag for me so what you've got in here i'll just explain so in the fork leg you've got this is the air side you've got a um, split air shaft air damper so you've got a floating piston inside the fork leg which separates two chambers top chamber is your spring the bottom chamber is like a volume spacer so at the moment there's no air in this bottom it's all the air is in the top there's 50 psi in there and it's pushed that volume spacer to the bottom so what i'm going to do now is say try the bike out um, see how it feels and then come back and then adjust the volume in the bottom so I've, much as i thought i've tried the bike out and it's now going through its travel far too quickly um, without any bottom uh, any air in the bottom chamber you've got a very linear spring which means you travel through you go through the travel at the same sort of rate what you wanted to, what we're trying to do now is to ramp it up a bit so we'll put some air in the bottom chamber i'm going to start off with 10 psi don't put too much in and I'll, I'll just show you what happens so this forks only had air in the top and what you'll find will happen i'll just move you a bit closer I'm not going to hear what goes on. So when I put air in, you should hear a little clonk where the piston starts to move. So at the moment, there's no air in that chamber at the moment, so nothing registering on the pump. As soon as I start to pump this, it will go up quite quickly because it's the chamber here is, is well, basically non-existent. So we'll just see. There, it's shooting up already. Listen. there it just clunked so what it's done is it equaled the pressure with the top chamber because that piston can move freely uh, there's already air pressure in the top so whatever i put in the bottom it's going to it's going to show the same pressure on the pump so 50 psi so i'm now going to add 10 psi in the bottom chamber So we've now got 60 in the bottom and I'm again going to go and try the bike out just to see how it feels and then we'll just come back and I'll uh, let you know how we get on. Right so uh, much as I thought I've got to add a little bit more so the fork still bottoms out very slightly so to get it working the way I want it to I'm going to add a little bit more pressure in the bottom chamber so we'll just do that. I'm going to add another 10 PSI. I've done this before, so I sort of know what I'm going to end up with. But I'll go through the process. This is You can do exactly the same thing. So it's quite simple. Air in the top, tune it in the bottom. So you tune the, the fork, how it works. So we'll add another 10 PSI. So I'm going to go up now to 70. That's just about it. That's 70 PSI now. Now what may happen now is the fork will feel too hard. So I'm just going to try the sag now without touching the top. I haven't touched the chop chamber yet. I've also added 20 psi in the bottom. So it's going to up the pressure in the top chamber by 20 psi as well. So we'll just check that now. As I thought, it's barely moved. So what we'll do now is take a little bit of pressure out of the top chamber. So I'm going to drop it back down to 50, which is what I originally had, which seemed to work. So we'll just try the sag now, see how that feels. Let's just get a tape and measure that. Yeah, it looks just about bang on. Yeah, it's 30 mil, so around about 25%. And yeah, they feel about right. So what, what the best thing to do now is obviously take the bike out and ride it just to double check. Now, 
the other thing to do is just to check your rebound damping. So the rebound is taken care of by the, the little knob on the other leg. So you've, on this leg, you've got a red knob. Uh, clockwise lessens the damping. So if you don't have enough damping, when you've got the right pressure in your fork, you may find the topping out. So what you do then is you anti-clockwise until the top out stops. I know it's six or seven clicks. Yeah, it stopped me. So what you want it, you want it to come back pretty fast, as fast as you can without it topping out, just so that the fork returns. Okay. <clears throat> now with all that done, all you need to do is make sure you put your caps back on, your air caps back on the fork, and go and ride it. So there you have it. That's how you fit your Ren forks, set them up to ride. Uh, hopefully that was of use to you. Um, if you've got anything you need to know or any comments you want to make, you can obviously put them in the comments below this video. That'd be great to hear from you if you need to know anything um, or just want to have a chat. Um, so that's it. Yeah, if you want to uh, like the video and subscribe, that would be great. Like everybody else we're on YouTube, we all need subscribers and likes. Just helps spread the word a bit. And um, yeah, that's it for now. Plenty more stuff coming. I'll catch you later.